Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, everybody, or good morning, depending on where you are in the country. This is Jeremiah, it's J-Man Monero, J-Man Speaks, coming to you with J-Man's Ed Talks. I think it's number 18. Uh, we're here with Gary Rogers. I'm going to call him our conference and convention veteran specialist of the day uh, to help us and, and to help you, really, uh, if, you're, if you're a new realtor coming to the conference for the first time or you're a veteran realtor, how to kind of help you get the most out of these action-packed four days that you might be in San Francisco. So first things first, Mr. Rogers, what, what should they do besides register, book your travel, get a hotel? Sure. The, the first and foremost thing you sh should do is get a hold of the conference schedule. Sit down, look at the different sessions, think about your own business and what you would like to sharpen your skills at. Um, there's a, a, over 120 sessions. Um, it was wow. very particular that the way they were chosen, uh, we had a record number of applications. I want to say it was between 540 and 550. Uh, wow. And so uh, the committee has taken a lot of time to make sure that the topics and the sessions and the speakers are relevant, that they're going to deliver great content that's meaningful. And it's not going to be something like some events you go to and you're rah-rah for a couple of days. This is stuff that we want you to take home and apply to your business. So with that in mind, you have to keep an eye on your business plan and really self-evaluate what, what you need to build it up. If you're weak on video, there's plenty of video. Uh, I will say on the video part, we have more than ever this year. And, um, you know, and you're a huge expert on video. And so, as you know, Thank there's you. different slices of video, whether it's something like this podcast um, you know, hitting the community restaurant or reviews or whatever. So when you pick a topic, make sure you understand fully what you're going for. Um, uh, you know, things like lead generation, there's always going to be plenty of options with that too. So, so I would just say, sit down, look at the conference schedule, look at all the different titles, but read the descriptions because as much as we want to make sure the titles are representative and catchy, uh, right. Make sure the content is what you think it is before you schedule that in. Well, and I think if, if they can go to conference.realtor, they'll be able to download the app. Is that correct? For that those, is correct. That is for correct. The, our, our tech savvy this, folks, depending on how you like, whether you, if you like a paper calendar, you want to look at it, <laughs> or, or if you want it on the app and you can, you can build your schedule from there, right? That's right. That's right. And I, and I, I end up usually doing both. Um, you know, there's a lot of government, there's a lot of other meetings and events to do. And I just find it's um, more helpful if I just whip out a piece of paper instead of if I'm walking down the hallway, looking at my phone, we know how annoying that is when people run into you. Um, but um, on conference.realtor, you can pick the sessions that you're interested in. You can actually um, overlap the same time frame with two or three sessions and kind of make your decision as you get there. Um, but it will sync with your mobile app. You can communicate people with the mobile app um, and there'll be messages from the conference staff and the, and the community members during the course of that event. So I, I like what you said. I mean, with over 120 sessions, it kind of makes it challenging to choose from. And I know you, you were telling me kind of offline that not, you've had tracks now kind of built in, whether it's early in the business or lead generation, you can kind of pick your path, if you will. So it kind of makes it a little bit easier to choose from. Right. And, and, you know, we've always had uh, broad, broad stroke specialties, sales, marketing, brokerage, and everything. Right, um, right. Uh, some of the staff have asked us to really kind of think, think, you know, where we were when we were newer or, or more experienced. And so um, Excellent. One, of the, one of the hot tracks this year is early career. And the beautiful part about it is any one of these sessions is not solely for somebody new, brand new or newer in the business. It's good to sharpen up your skills in a lot of them. For instance, um, we have one on lead generation that, that Shea Hada is going to use. And Shea Hada is a huge producer out of Chicago, Nobu's uh, wife, who's just a great, great speaker. And she has 10 or 12 ideas, unique ideas on how to generate leads. So, you know, this day and age, you know, there's a lot of discussion about buying leads or not. And she's going to give you some great ideas on how to just come out of the, come out of the gate and get leads. We're going to follow that up with, um, a, a couple of sessions, but one in particular by a um, young woman out of Boston named Jess Witter, who yeah. has had a phenomenal success rate on conversion. And uh, I'd highly encourage you to, to check that out. So, so we have lead generation, then we have lead conversion. 
Well, that becomes a customer. So the next session that we're putting out, uh, Evan Fuchs is, is uh, doing oh, a Evan. build a buyer agency consultation business. So you're taking that customer and converting it into a client. And so the, the fourth stage is five stages in this early track. The fourth stage is a session. Um, uh, Kim, Kim Knapp is going to be doing it on how to use reviews and really leverage the living daylights out of them. Um, if you're doing reviews correctly and asking for them and planning on asking at the beginning of the transaction, it's going to go a lot smoother. But the goal there is if you're newer, newer, you want to look like you've been an experienced person for 10 or 15 years if they're reading your reviews. And then finally, how to wrap it all up. And we have uh, Ryan Savage and a few folks talking about community branding and how, you know, basically how to become the mayor of your community. And that that's more widespread right. but very, very important foundation um, that people become familiar with you. So we're very happy with those five tracks and those five choices that will build anybody's business, but especially somebody newer that's, you know, having a little challenge. So I just want to review here. So we have early career track, lead generation, lead conversion, reviews, community branding. One, That's two, the, three. Well, the first one was early. The first one was lead gen, then lead, lead gen. conversion. Okay. Converting to buyer agency. Oh, converting. Okay. Converting to buyer client, the buyer consultation business. Then the reviews on how to how to leverage your success, and then a little bit broader, put it all together and create a kind of a community enhanced profile. Love it so much. I love how it's dialed in more specifically so you can kind of, especially like, just like you said, early in your career, or even if you've been in the business 20 years, sometimes it doesn't hurt to get back to basics and, you know, start back with the lead conversions. And, and we live in a society now that's so heavily governed by reviews and testimonials and mm -hmm. going to the, going to the village, if you will, to find out, you know, if, if I've hired the right realtor for the job. And so I, I like that. And I, I want to go back to what you said <clears throat> before about the, all the video options, because there's, like you said, there's so many different slices. You can kind of pick your own video journey that they should research ahead of time what the classes are about. And again, that information will be in the app as mm -hmm. well as um, online. But what are some of the different video classes that they can choose from? Well, I knew you were going to ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, honestly, there's so many of them, uh, just, it's hard just, to figure just for out. Yeah. A full disclosure. I had to, I reviewed every one of those applications. So I'm, my head's a mess about which ones I don't have, okay. favorite, but, um, I know you're speaking, uh, this year as well. Um, yeah. so I'm always going to recommend you. Uh, that's why we <laughs> talk so much. Um, yeah, I appreciate that. You know, there's a video production, uh, workshop on how to use very simple equipment um, uh, and not have to be a techie. That's always the number one fear of people, as you mm -hmm. know, um, that people are just so fearful of picking up the phone and just talking into the phone. Um, there's some brand building, uh, segments and sessions that do dip into it. Um, but I also think, um, getting off video for one second, if I could, there's also a great series, basically NAR talks, which is kind of like the okay. TED talk type of thing where they're going to drill down on, several topics. Uh, one is business uh, intelligence tools. Another one is going right at top producers and just give it to us straight. Don't, you know, make it flowery, much like a TED talk. Um, right. several, several scheduled. Um, and so I check those out as well. Um, I'm just looking at one of them. Uh, NAR talks to the C-suite talking, talking about disruption of significant changes. Uh, is it normal for our business to be doing that? How do you adapt and so forth? So that's another one that I think is going to have uh, some really good output. Okay. Well, I guess the moral of the story is get on, do your research, uh, regardless of where you are, whether you're new at video, whether you're new in the business or your experience, there's something for everybody, 120 sessions. There's definitely something for everybody. But what about the extra outside of the CE? You know, there's a lot of opportunities. Plus, you told me a, a really good tip that nobody ever told me before about getting there early to the sessions. Talk about that for a second. Yep. Um, you know, when you have 20 some odd thousand real people, it's <laughs> impossible to network with everybody. In fact, it won't be effective to network with more than a dozen during the course of the week you're there, really. But right. Yeah, it, it's always amazed me. I, early on, I, I just did it to meet people. But if you go to a session early, there's two ways to, uh, um, most a lot of these speakers are, are everyday practitioners, and if right. they're 
something that we're considering them to be an expert on that topic. If you have a few minutes and they're free, introduce yourself. Get to know them a little bit. But uh, if they are busy, pull up a in the three or four people around you. You have a few minutes usually before a session starts. Find out where, where they're from. Uh, right. Cards, you know, bump phones, whatever. But um, it, phones, yeah. it, how many people you end up um, having common friends with. And, oh, yeah, I'm from this and that. Um, there's a lot of people that serve in leadership and throughout the associations that are mixed through that group. They know a lot of their people back home. So if you trust them, you're going to have a common thread there. Yeah, and I know a lot of agents that have really built a successful referral-based business nationwide so that when you're referring somebody, you know, to, to Rochester or to Boston or wherever, you know, that person's located, they know it's a quality agent. They've met them in person. They have similar interests, and the client will get taken care of, which is what we care most about. But without without having that in-person handshake face to face belly to belly it's it's hard sometimes to refer somebody and be confident that your client's going to be taken care of lost lost my audio i think um, can you yeah. hear me you hear okay my battery's getting low on the airpods i think all right so what about the additional sessions besides the educational sessions like there's a lot of stuff to choose from i, I think you'd mentioned nar 360 don't miss out on that yep right NAR 360 will give you give everybody a, 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 an overview of what the association has been working on, some of the successes, whether it's lobbying or um, uh, just changes uh, that we've been making over the course of the year. Uh, I know there's some things coming up with the board of directors that will probably be discussed about coming soon discussions. Um, oh, yeah. But uh, there's there's always a really great speaker um, uh, for the for the 360 um, it's always full. Uh, get there early. It is that popular. It is by far the single most well attended um, portion of the conference, other than maybe the concert and the general session. But as far as a separate session goes, um, the room is always full. So get there early. Okay. Um, I remember last year it was great in Boston. And then who was the like i want to call him a poet because i feel like that's what he is but he talked about you know talked about his experience with a realtor that somewhere in america there's a family that you haven't met like i don't think there's a dry eye in the place when he's yeah and, th and that's the point and i i can't think of his name either off the top of my head but that's the thing it was it was it's truly motivational and and you really um uh it's it almost becomes emotional because of uh the different speakers we have that that was a home run i hope we can do the same this year. Uh, I don't know who will, that's not, that's out of my pay grade about who's uh, going to be there at 360, but, um, but it's always great. We, you know, we've always had positive uh, uh, feedback of people that attend 360. Okay. So what about like the different committees and, and government, like, can somebody just sit in on those just to kind of experience that maybe they're interested in, in getting involved, they're involved on the state level, but they're not sure how to do it on the national level. Sure. Um, how would they do that? Um, because of my involvement in, in some of the positions I've been lucky enough to hold, I'm, I'm asked a lot on, um, gee, what committee should I go on? Or, you know, can you write me a recommendation or uh, um, so forth? And one of the first questions is, what do you know about the committee? You know, just because it says right. this doesn't mean anything. Um, <laughs> so one tip that if you really want to get it right is if if you compare the governance schedule with some of the session schedules and you have a little bit of time, or maybe you make it a priority, um, you can uh, jump in and, and you can participate, but you can come in and observe pretty much any committee. There's only a few that are closed, tends to be like the finance and, you know, the fiduciary stuff that, you know, aren't, isn't open unless there's a need to know. But right. predominantly, I would say 90% of all the committees um, go. Um, and, and if you get there early, um, talk to somebody that's on the committee and just say, hey, listen, I'm just going to sit in the committee, but can I talk to you afterwards about your experience and what right. it's like? Or really, really important, if you sit through a session or a committee uh, meeting and you really say, oh, this is for me. I, I got this down. This is something I'm really interested in, no matter what it is. Be sure to go up and introduce yourself to the vice chair and the chair and tell them, I'm going to be applying for this. I sat through this meeting I'm really interested in serving on it. Um, 
your card and talk to you a little bit before the recommendations and endorsements come in. Um, I can send you my resume, but if you would endorse me or at least keep, keep your eye out for me, I'd appreciate it. You know, serving as a chair, I've had a couple of people, not a lot, but a couple of people come up to me and they're very memorable at that point because I, right. I see them in the meeting and they're very attentive. And after the meeting, they asked me a couple of questions about some things that went on. I could tell they had a natural interest in it. That's somebody that we want on the committee. We don't want somebody that's just looking to put the resume item on. Right. Right. Excellent. Excellent advice. All right. So they go this action packed four days. Right. They leave kind of like their heads ready to explode. Like what what advice do you have? Like as far as because really, just like you said, we want them to come to the conference learn and then apply it to their business. Don't just take a whole notepad full of notes and then put it on the shelf right. with the rest of the notes from the last uh, conference that they went to. Uh, what are some tips for action steps? And then also just kind of following up with the people that you meet from the conference. Cause I think you're really good at that. Um, yeah. Oh, so some of the, some of the basic tips that, that some of my uh, counterparts here in Massachusetts I've noticed do and, and elsewhere, um, you know, that, the minute you meet somebody and you have their card, if you have a minute, just write a note on the back of it, something that they mentioned that you, it's going to trigger you remembering meeting them or something that they said or where they were from or whatever. Um, right. And some people actually pack note cards and bring them with them. And that evening, they sit there while it's fresh in their memory, writing somebody a note, seal it all up, put it, you know, drop it in That's the mail. Great tip. Um, yeah. So, you know, when you come back and you have, you know, 30 people you want to send personal notes to, if that's your thing. Um, you know, you want to keep up on it. But um, I, I think the biggest thing is to make sure you reach out in some way, shape or form, whether it's an email or otherwise, get them in your contact manager under ref potential referral agents, reach right. out to all of them once a quarter, just saying, hey, listen, Jay, man, you know, I know you remember me. I'm over here in Boston area. And if you have any referrals, right. man, I'm sure I could use it. Hope you're well. Hey, did you apply that thing in the session that we talked about? How's that going? Right. Yeah. Personalizing it. And I like what you said earlier about quality over quantity. Don't just, I'm looking at my desk here. I have a pile of business cards right here. Um, <laughs> don't just collect business cards to collect hey, them. My card, I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> but don't just collect them to collect them. But like you said, whoever you maybe had a, a substantial conversation with right. writing notes and something about that conversation that you can follow up with and, and add value to that relationship. Don't, don't say, what can you do for me? Where's my referrals, Gary? Come on, man. I need some you. referrals here. <laughs> hey, uh, another thing too is, and, and I, I, I realized this last year, you know, when uh, like you, you know, I ended up with a lot of business cards, which is the goal. But if somebody spent the extra money to have a little bit different business card that stuck out from the others, that I find that always coming up to the top of the pile. Right. Uh, I, I want to give you a little tip that, uh, that, um, you know, practice what I preach, not what I'm practicing, right? I, I forgot to do it this year, and I, I actually still have time, and so I'm not dead yet. But why not have a card that you print up your business card and on the back saying, you met me at the 2019 NAR conference or, you know, something to that effect. But personalize, you know, it's cheap enough to get 500 business cards that are specifically saying, would love your referrals. Um, right. Get a website, referjman.com. And put that on your business card. Right. That, that website should have everything why I want to refer to you as a professional business to business. So little so, things like that make such a difference. I'm writing this down. I like that. Referjman.com. I'm going to go over and serve that URL right now. Make sure you do refer, not refer. Otherwise, you're getting a different <laughs> Hey, you know, in some of the states, it's still no. <laughs> I, I, I learned that uh, early on. <laughs> Right, right. That's, that's funny. That's funny. So anything you want to just say in, in, in closing, um, so um, whoever's watching this on the playback, again, new agents, existing agents, experienced agents, everybody. You know, uh, those speakers in their early career track are really, really great practitioners. Um, they, they, they are, they're out there every day uh, as we are. So, um, and oh, if I could ask one favor of, of the audience that's watching this, Please fill out the reviews and, and oh, yeah. you know the ratings. Uh, we are highly, highly built on reviewing all the proposals, um, every detail about it to see who's going to be the best speaker for our audience, for our members. 
But more importantly, we don't know how they're going to do until you tell us how they how they do. Right. Oh, so there's an app there. It takes two seconds to say, yeah, the speaker was okay. The content was good or the content was excellent. Maybe they're speaking spot, style. Be kind, but be truthful. Uh, right. It's really important because um, a lot of these speakers are newer speakers. 38% of the speakers last year were brand new to NAR, had never spoken at a conference before. Um, doesn't mean that they haven't been out there and about like you and very, a lot of others that, that are in demand all over the country. But we want to introduce people that haven't been to the national audience yet. So f if we want to bring them back next year, maybe on the same topic or another topic, the reviews are critical. It's, we're, it's only the second or third year that we're doing such a rating system. And it's going to live or die depending on people that, that do it. But, um, but I, I would look for some high, some different sessions this year. Um, one that comes to mind that I had some input on was how to build a, a, a strong B2B business. Uh, oh, and I nice. think that's Saturday at one o'clock and you get three practitioners, um, uh, Sasha Farmer included, um, so, you know, some high profile, really deep, deep uh, thinking um, thought leaders that are doing something different with their business to business uh, referral system. Uh, Shannon Bus Rogers out of Rhode Island will be moderating it. It's going to be a fabulous panel. Um, uh, there's other things here, who realtors are. Learn to tell your story about why you're a realtor. Um, it really does make a difference. Oh, we are. Yeah. Clients and uh, bring up things that the realtors are doing for them. Um, and then, you know, just pick and choose. I mean, there's just so many things here. I'm looking over the list. Um, by the way, the early career tracks are marked specifically um, and say, you know, for instance, I'm looking at one now, 15 unique lead generation ideas, and there's parentheses, early career track. Those are also be some of those are being shown twice. So if you miss okay. it the first time and you're still around on Monday, we're going to repeat it because Excellent. one of the, the double edged swords about having so many great sessions. Uh, Hard to choose. Right. And so on that one, we really felt it was important to try to repeat a lot of the sessions. So uh, if you miss it Friday, Saturday, Sunday, um, check, check the schedule. There's some on Monday. So you don't have to maybe you wait until Monday and hit the other one that you wanted to hit. Okay. Well, I, I just, again, want to reiterate to the folks who are, who are watching, be sure to review the speakers because I feel like if you love somebody, share it with the world, right? Because it's the right. best way for them to come back. Um, don't just complain if you don't. Like I think so often people are like, oh, this guy, and then, then they want to go to the app and do something. But it's in the app. Be sure you go to the specific session. Typically, I'm just guessing here. Yep. I haven't played with right. it yet, but go to the specific session and then review and give honest feedback because as a speaker myself, you know, saying everything is great doesn't help us to get better. We're constantly trying to improve and be better. And the only way to do that is to get candid feedback. So that's right. Yeah, it, it's it's so important. Um, uh, the meeting and conference committee, they you know, they've done a lot of work to review these. It's a whole different system over the last two years in doing it. It's exhaustive, um, but it's that's rewarding right. because we have such a broad uh, range of topics and depth uh, from practitioners. But if you don't review, um, I, just as a quick example, as you know, you've, you've already been through it, but when speakers apply to speak on the proposal, they're asked to provide a video. Uh, we need to know that they can put a couple syllables together and actually give <laughs> us the information that's in their head. We know this. Right. We just, right. you know, if they wrote a, a, a piece on something, it, it could be brilliant, but it's a speaking part. <laughs> um, <laughs> And so uh, even though that's really simple, somebody could be doing something so simple as this and look at the phone and say, hey, listen, my name is Jamie and I'm going to speak on this and I appreciate the opportunity to speak at NAR. That's fine. But unless they can deliver the whole session, we're counting on, on you guys to, to hit the review button and let us know how they did. All right. Well, thank you, Gary, again, for taking the time. I know you're busier than I am and I am overscheduled like you wouldn't believe. Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, again, thank you so much. And look for Gary. If you see him, make sure to stop him, shake his hand because yeah, sure, this is the guy to know. Right. Yeah. So uh, where are you going to be day to day so they know where to. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Um, all the committee members are going to have committee badges, I, I believe, this year. OK. Um, so look for look for any of those. We're ambassadors. There's 48 of us um, uh, walking oh, around. Yeah. Um, be at the expo, the expo grand opening. Um, uh, that is on, oh, bear with me one second. That is on Friday, Friday. 
Friday, I, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Well, the conference kickoff is at 8 a.m. Um, double check on the expo opening. I believe that uh, that is later in the day on Friday. Um, that's the other thing. Expo, expo, expo. It's your one chance to go talk to some of these vendors and find out if a certain face to face or not. So I won't I won't go through the list. The time is limited here, but please visit the expos. There's a lot of giveaways out there. There's a lot of informational booths. There's a lot of short sort of TED talk talk things going on within the NAR booths and some of the others. So don't miss out on that. It's actually a lot of fun. There's a lot of contests over there. Okay, well, thank you, Gary. And again, if you're tuning in, thank you. And we hope to see you next two weeks from today or so, I roughly. Know. I don't know, 10 days away. Holy cow. Um, trips between now and then, so I'm just going to keep the bag packed. <laughs> yeah, and we're, we're going to get some new business cards printed here in a moment. There you go. So we hope to see you then. And again, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Have a great day. Thank you, J-Man. Talk to you soon.